When you get insurance, oftentimes through your employer, you have a lot of different choices. And you might see letters like HMOs, PPOs, and EPOs, and HSAs, and you're like, what do all of these things mean? Well, we're about to, to cover that. So let's just start with this, these first three, because these are actually different types of insurance plans. An HMO stands for Health Maintenance Organization. And this is interesting because this is a situation where you have the insurer and the hospital or the provider is the same entity. So it's insurance plus the provider. Provider just means the people who are actually giving you the healthcare, the doctors, the nurses, the hospitals, the clinics, etc. And then the insurers are the people who say, hey, give us some money, the premium. And then if you have medical expenses, we will cover it. So this is all integrated together. A PPO, to some degree, is insurance only by itself. So I'll just write it. It's just insurance. And it lets you see pretty much any provider. It gives you a lot of flexibility. And we'll talk about that more in more detail. So that's provider one. This is provider two. This is provider three. And then an EPO, an exclusive provider organization, is kind of in between. It is independent insurance, but they restrict the number of providers that you can go to. So they might say provider one, provider two are okay, but you can't go to anyone else, while the PPO would have let you go to many different people. So what are going to be the trade-offs here? Well, I'm going to put HMOs at one extreme, right over here, HMOs, and then PPOs at the other extreme. And in between, I'm going to put EPOs. Now, if we think about cost, cost goes from low to high here. And the idea here is an HMO, they can be more efficient, they can control costs. I'll talk about they might put provide more restrictions, while PPO, on the other hand, they let you go anywhere. You might be able to go to a very expensive hospital, a very expensive doctor. And that cost comes in your premium. That's what you and or your employer pay on a regular basis in order to get that insurance. It can also be in your copays. I remember when I had an HMO, my copay would be like 10 or $20 every time that I had a procedure. I remember when my first child was born, which probably costs tens of thousands of dollars in medical care, at least thousands of dollars, uh, they asked me for $20. I thought it was a very good deal. But then later we had a PPO and when, when my other children were born, I they covered 80%, but 20% of $10,000 or whatever it cost is still a lot. So I had to spend a lot more money, but I had more choice in terms of where uh, the provide which providers we used and even uh, whether we had access to specialists, et cetera. And, I, and that's the next dimension I will talk about. If we talk about flexibility, so why would you, if cost is much higher for a PPO than an HMO, why would you not always do an HMO? Well, the idea here is, is that some people really value that flexibility. Flexibility also goes up as you pay more. As we mentioned, HMO, you essentially are just going to be using the provider that is bundled with that HMO. You can't go anywhere else, only in emergencies. Obviously, if you're in some random place and you have to go to the ER, you can still use those. But there are, there are other than that, a lot of restrictions. And even there, you have to really make sure that you're doing everything on the up and up. EPOs provide a little bit more flexibility than HMOs in that there are outside providers here with the EPO, but they are limited. You can't go to anyone, while a PPO lets you go to anyone. There's also flexibility when it comes to referrals for specialists. What do I mean by specialists? Well, you have your, your oftentimes your family care, your general practitioner, your the, per, the doctor that you go to for almost anything. And then you have specialists like cardiologists and endocrinologists or dermatologists. And in HMOs, you need, usually need a referral. If this is your primary care physician, right over here, I'll put a little stethoscope on them they have to refer you to a cardiologist or they have to refer you to a dermatologist. I'll point to someone's skin. They have a little rash to go to a dermatologist. So you have to go through that doctor to get a referral to the specialists while with the EPOs and the PPOs, 
you don't necessarily need those referrals. So you have more flexibility and PPOs offer even more flexibility than EPOs because you can go to anyone. If there's some world leading doctor at some hospital, someplace in the country, and you said, I need to go there for some special treatment, the PPO will cover that while an EPO will not. Now it won't cover all of it. It's usually something like 80% of it. So you still might have a very large copay, the amount that you might have to contribute. Now, the last thing I'll talk about are deductibles. So almost all health plans have something called a deductible. And a deductible, deductible, and we talk about it in more detail in other videos, but this is how much you need to pay out of your own pocket before the health plan kicks in. Now, as you can imagine, low deductible health plans tend to be more expensive than high deductible health plans. But high deductible health plans are oftentimes a better deal. You have to oftentimes do the math, especially when they are combined with HSAs. What do I mean by that? HSAs are health savings accounts. These are things where you can put money aside before paying taxes on it, so you don't have to pay taxes on that money, and then you could use it in combination with high deductible health plans in order to pay that out-of-pocket money before the health plan kicks in. So you might sometimes say, okay, you know, there's one health plan that has a $500 deductible and they have another health plan that has a $5,000 deductible. Wouldn't I always want the $500 deductible? Well, it turns out that this one might cost thousands of dollars more in premium. In fact, it might cost $4,500 more in premium or even more. Sometimes it might cost $5,000 more in premium. So you're paying that one way or the other, whether or not you're using the services. Well, if you go with the high deductible health plan, and then even that $5,000, if you need to pay it in a year that you're using that insurance, you, you have a lot of health care, well, then you can pay for it tax pre-tax by using your health savings account.